everyone. We are Environmental Solutions, and we would like to thank you for this opportunity to present our proposal regarding the development of strategies for testing and remediation of indoor air contaminants. I'd like to start off by introducing our team. I'm Ashley Collier, I'm the project manager. I'm Beth Myers, and I'm going to be doing professional oversight for this project. I'm Deidre Gustafson, and I'll be doing technical oversight for this project. And I'm Samir Patel, and I'll be the client liaison. So our goal is to develop a cost-effective and easily implementable strategy for testing and remediation of indoor air contaminants in residential spaces. We are developing this project for a client, the International Center for Appropriate and Sustainable Technology, or ICAST. As people spend the majority of their time indoors, particularly in their homes, the importance of minimizing those contact with harmful contaminants is clear. Poor indoor air quality can impact health and quality of life. For example, some contaminants can exacerbate existing respiratory conditions, while others are carcinogenic. Currently, few to no regulations exist for indoor residential buildings. And uh, as a result, the responsibility of ensuring a clean and safe environment tends to fall to the building owner or manager. By putting together a plan that uses Um, by putting together a plan that utilizes accessible and simple methods of testing and remediation, we can make it easy for these individuals to become informed on their air quality and address any potential issues. As was requested by our client ICAST, we will design a plan that is easily implemented along with their current energy efficiency audit service that their company offers. Um, this makes our main considerations cost effectiveness and ease of implementation. By ease of implementation, I mean that we want to minimize the additional work required by the technician performing the energy efficiency audit. In addition to those considerations, we'll be, we will be adapting this plan to be used in apartment buildings of varying sizes and designs. And uh, here you can see a list of the main indoor pollutants we intend to address. Um, I'd like to provide you with a little bit of brief background information on these pollutants, their sources, and some testing and remediation. So allergens and mold and mildew are both biological contaminants that exist in particulate form. They can be, um, allergens can come from pet dander or dust mites, and mold and mildew typically comes from fungal growth in human spaces. Dust and smoke also exist in particulate form now. And um, volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, are any compound that vaporizes readily at room temperature. And these could exist in cleaning supplies, building materials, and paints. And um, there are literally hundreds of toxic VOCs, so our group intends to develop a priority list of about 10 to 20 VOCs, and uh, compounds will make that list based on their toxicity and the likelihood of their being in an apartment building. Our final contaminant is radon. Radon is a byproduct of the radioactive decay of uranium, and it exists in a gaseous form, which makes the danger for inhalation. So, uh, Typical testing methods for allergens, mold and mildew, dust, and smoke are similar. You can use passive or active filter sampling, send those filters to a lab, and then have the particulates identified. Uh, radon testing typically involves sampling in the lowest level of a building or home, making that air simple to a lab, and testing for the presence and or uh, level of radon present. VOCs can be tested for specifically, or you can test for total VOCs. An example of a method for doing that would be SUMA canisters. It's a stainless steel canister that collects a given volume of air, it's then sent to a lab um, where mass spectrometry analysis is performed to identify the compounds and their concentrations. Overall remediation for indoor air pollutants typically involves increasing ventilation, decreasing humidity, and controlling or eliminating sources if possible. And at this point, I'll pass the presentation on to Beth, and she'll provide additional background information. <coughs> Um, so some additional considerations that we are going to look into. Um, ICAS provided us with a list of two locations that are possible locations that um, may be future clients for this indoor air quality testing. Um, the picture you see up there in the far right corner, um, that's a picture of an apartment complex, uh, the Heist at Mars and Lake, which is located in Lakewood, Colorado. Um, that has, um, there's 120 apartment units in that facility, so that's one of the locations that we'll be considering. The other location is this picture right here, um, and that's Morningside Heights. That's located in La Junta, Colorado, and it has 50 units in that apartment complex. So um, in addition to thinking about the size of these different apartment complexes, um, we also have to consider any other regulations that might be at those specific locations. Um, for example, if we do something with remediation where we have to consider building codes, we would have to look at the local city or state regulations for that. 
All right, just as a little bit more background on ICAST, ICAST is our client. Um, it is a not-for-profit company um, that is interested in helping um, communities that are underserved with things like energy audits, like we've um, the example of energy audits, and we're also looking into uh, the indoor air quality, and I know there's another team that's looking into water quality. So ICAST is interested in providing these um, to the clients, like I said, in underserved communities. Resource Smart is what their energy efficiency audit is currently called. So all of our deliverables, um, we're going to try to make it so that potentially those could fit within their current energy audit. Um, so here are the four deliverables. Um, since this project is mostly based on research, a lot of our deliverables are reporting out based on the research that we've performed. Um, our first report is a regulation and policy report. In addition to the two locations here in Colorado that were provided by ICAST, they've also asked us to look into the, a four-state region, uh, California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado. So when we're looking at regulation and policy, we'll be looking at indoor air quality regulation um, and policy in all four of those locations. Our second deliverable is a processes and cost reports. Um, what that will be is a report back to ICAST about the different costs and processes involved with testing and remediation for all of the pollutants that were um, that Ashley addressed. Um, our third deliverable is a cost-benefit analysis where we will actually look at the cost of integrating um, testing and remediation based on, on what we choose and with ICAST input um, and how we can uh, come up with the best cost plan to in integrate that into their current energy audit. And then lastly, we will um, provide them with an implementation report on how to uh, make that happen. Um, so one of the first things that we'll do is an uh, um, uh, alternative assessment. So we're going to do alternative assessments for both testing and remediation of indoor air quality um, for both the uh, various different contaminants and then also looking at an overall um, option. Uh, what we have up here is a decision matrix. This is a quality tool that we're using. Um, and so you can see on the um, <coughs> left side over here the different metrics that we may use. Uh, we'll work with ICAST to see if they have additional metrics. The current ones we have are reliability and validity of certain testing and remediation. Um, the safety is obviously very important for the apartment complexes. Um, like I mentioned, ICAST is a not-for-profit company, and they are trying to um, provide these services for with little to no cost. So cost of implementation is a, is a huge factor that we're considering. Um, the time required and then also ease of use, as Ashley mentioned, it would be nice if the technician that was going in to do the energy audit could also um, maybe have <coughs> the testing process as well. Um, you can see here we're using a 139 weighting scheme so that it will make it very clear which alternatives come out as the, um, the most important or the, or the best options in terms of relative length. Um, like I said, a decision matrix is a quality tool. Um, we are also going to be using internal quality audits so that each team member will be reviewing other team members' uh, work so that we can ensure that we are providing a quality product to the ICAST team. Um, and so this is just one of our quality tools that we'll be using throughout the process. Um, so now I will pass it on to Deidre. She's going to talk about the next steps in our scope of work. So what we would like to offer to ICAST, our client, is a simple three-step process that they can use to address their particular sites that they get. Um, first step will be a pre-evaluation of the site, and depending on that, you can lead to a couple different options. This is just a preliminary wrap. Um, and then the second step will be conducting appropriate testing specific to the site, and then step three will provide the client or ICAST will provide the client with suggested remediation relevant to that particular site. <coughs> In the first step, the pre-evaluation, we've thought about a few potential methods. First, we think that ICAST should not only research their particular location and apartment complex, but also the surrounding buildings. For instance, if there's some sort of a pollutant being released into the air that could get into these homes, then that would be something to account for when we're testing. And then we would also suggest an evaluation for the tenants. It would help address any issues that may be present in the complex already, such as allergens, or if people are having respiratory illnesses, it will pre-assess that 
and maybe bring in the big guns, so to speak. Um, and then we suggest that they interview with the manager or the owner <coughs> of the building to find out when the building was made, what kind of materials might be present in there that are causing respiratory issues, and also uh, if there's a HVAC system, how that is or may be a, impacting the air quality in the building. The second step is testing. And we've been considering whether or not ICAST should use maybe a real-time or an outsourced lab analysis. Now this yellow cube is called a multi-ray plus, and this is an item you can bring into a residence, and it can scan the air at that particular time and tell you how many VOCs are in there, how much mold is present, how much allergens are present, and basically it gives you a really nice immediate result as to that particular time. And then there's another option which we are looking into through Home Air Check, which is this guy. And this unit you set up and it runs over a period of time and gets sent off to a lab, and this is one that may take a little bit longer to get back. So if you are living in conditions where it may not be safe, you won't exactly know immediately, but it will give you a very thorough reading as it is conducted over a period of time. And we suggest that a solution that addresses multiple contaminants, such as these two, would be a really beneficial and cost-efficient way to address air quality inside the complex. So on to the next step, <clears throat> step three, which is remediation. We'll divide possible remediation options into two broad subcategories, either infrastructure-based or contaminant-specific based on the nature of the contamination found in step two. Uh, for nearly all contaminants, the immediate and most favorable solution is to increase ventilation. Now, a multitude of technologies exist to accomplish this. For instance, you can install a basement sump system, you can employ sub-slab depressurization beneath the foundation of the building, or even opening a window could remediate uh, a multitude of indoor air quality problems. <clears throat> However, for some contaminants, uh, increased ventilation wouldn't necessarily get rid of the source. For instance, mold, mildew, and dust require physical removal of the sources of visible or even invisible areas of contamination. Uh, mold and mildew can be removed through a variety of treatment procedures, for instance, applying bleach or other biocidic solutions. Uh, the remediation op options we will suggest to ICAST will be determined based on uh, both cost and feasibility of implementation, as Ashley mentioned earlier. Uh, so, to my left is the tentative schedule that Environmental Solutions has proposed. Uh, we decided to split our approach to this design into six separate phases. Phases one and two are to establish the team and create the proposal. The next three phases, as you can see from the pie chart, take up the majority of the time of our tentative schedule, and they are research, evaluating decision matrix, assessing alternatives, and preparing a final report. Uh, the team decided to send bi-weekly reports to our ICAST liaison, Chad, in the back, and to integrate his feedback within our current phase and for future phases. Uh, as far as budgeting our time goes, the team decided that at least nine hours per week per group member will be necessary to uh, submit a high quality professional level design solution to ICAST. This translates to 36 hours per week per team 